In this video we'll be checking out Deluxe Paint 2 and Deluxe Paint 2 was released a long time ago it's a very ancient package where we can paint things and you can see the first thing that we need to do is to change our screen resolution you can see 320 times 256 that's the PAL screen resolution and we're running this in PAL mode so you can see the highest is 640 times 512 in high res mode and you can see the colours that we can choose in any of those modes are listed on the right and most people use low res because medium res can be flickery well interlace is definitely flickery and medium res is good for most things but you can see it doesn't really stretch too far down the screen so usually low res or high res are the best ones to go for and so which one are we going to choose for this we can have 16 colors this is an aga setup that we're in at the moment but this is deluxe paint 2 so you can only have 32 colors at maximum and that also depends on how much memory you've got but you can have 32 colors in low res mode so that's precisely what we're going to use on this little bit of a guide you can see it's very similar to modern paint applications apart from the icons are on the right instead of the left by holding down that right mouse button we can also load, save and delete we can change the colour palette as well the colour palette is the one that you can see on the right we can load it up, we can save it, we can juggle those colours around we can cycle those colours around with the tab key and that will cycle through all of those colours so that if you draw with those that will cycle through all of them That means that we can do very primitive animations and colour cycling effects means that we can get clouds moving and rivers moving and that kind of thing but that's a core processor trick and copy list movement isn't something that is particularly useful in a paint program but you can see that we can draw we do have colours available and we can freehand draw and you can see swap that will automatically change you to a swap page which is in the background and that means that you can have sprites and things loaded in the background and press the J key to swap between them and that's definitely a critical thing that I used when I was using this package for an animation you can put everything in the background and then put whatever you want in the foreground using the swap file and we can also cut and paste those on the fly and use those as an active brush so when we click that will stamp whatever we've got copied down and that will stamp down multiple times we can even do onion skinning and line that up in the background so that we can do animations with this and animations were available in deluxe paint 3 but you can see by swapping those things we can do basic onion skin effects using that method and that's definitely something that I used to love when I used to use this package and that's called a spare so you can copy everything to the spare you can merge front and back merge everything together from the spare and merge two images together and you can also set the page size up to whatever you like obviously it can't be bigger than the screen resolution that we're actually using at the moment which is lower resolution and show page that I think that shows everything on the page and also screen format is the screen resolution that we changed right at the beginning so we can change that on the fly let's check this out deluxe paint 2p released 1986 damn silver and so moving on to the brush menu if we highlight something as a brush we can load it we can save it delete it flip it around resize that rotate it blend it handle it so if we pick up something on the copy buffer that will automatically call it a brush and then once we've got that we can now handle that and move that and do all kinds of things with the brushes which maybe i'll show this is the pickup tool where we can pick up anything in a square and that means we can pick up anything like this as a brush and we can stamp that down as a stamper wherever we want to put that and we can also right click on that to change it to an area pick up for the brush rather than a square and this is the flood fill which is always the most problematic on Amiga applications what it's supposed to do is flood fill the whole lot to the bottom 
and it only fills the NTSC area apparently on this playthrough so I had to reset it try that again and yes this is what it's supposed to do we can flood fill and by clicking on the lower right section of the box tool that will fill in a filled box using the second color that we've got on our color palette the middle round one is blue and the out one is black so that will put a blue line on the screen and the background is black so that will put that on there you can also do various outlining as well and you can see well we can change the colors with the brush now we've picked that up and we can change the colors from the foreground to the background color so now that's the background color it's now red so we can do things like that for animations and things like that not that you really need to use some of these functions and some of these things aren't even used in modern applications but we can change foreground and background and things like that so now that we've got this brush we can also let's see we can rotate that and we can handle the brush that will mean that we can place our mouse pointer into the corner of that so that we can place that on the screen and we can also change the mode that we're going to use because just like modern applications we can use that pencil or that brush in any kind of a mode and that will affect the background whatever we're using on that and we're using smear at the moment so that's smearing whatever we've got on the screen and it doesn't really matter about the color if we've got the smear tool selected that will automatically smear that and so what else can we do we can blend we can cycle we can shade things as well so let's just see if anything does anything this is well let's just select a random color well it looks like it's gone into shade but it's kind of a cycle mode so it's cycling through all those weird colors you can see that we can change the color palette at any point and that will change the entire color palette including the screen color palette which is usually the first two colors on the color palette are used for the screen itself the black and this kind of beige color which you can see in the border so we can change that color smear and all these artistic effects using a solid or even a dotted leader line like that with a pencil we can change the thickness of that we can change it into a square so we can get pixel perfect any size that we like on the pencil tips and we can have it extra fine pencil tip if we really want that and that is particularly useful for getting those fine details so we can actually erase if we've got the background color selected as red like it's our background color we can simply hold down another button i think it's the right mouse button and that will erase whatever we've just put onto that screen so we can do that by pressing the left and the right and it's handy to have the second color selected by clicking the right mouse button on a different color as the background and that means that we can instantly erase whatever we've just put down so on this background it would be black but we can put instant 3d shapes together simply by copying and pasting things together and lining those up that's a weird dotted tool that we can put various lines down in a dot pattern and i've no idea what most of these functions are used for i tended to just use the normal drawing tools but you can see we can have a nice planet shape if we use the curve tool and that will mean that we can put a nice arc on the screen like we're drawing a planet and also let's see we can use a spray can to spray down whatever color we have we've got this light blue selected so we can spray down a kind of a texture effect and if we click on the top left corner of any of these drawing tools that will automatically change to a filled or an unfilled box so it depends if you click on the top left corner or the bottom right corner that will be filled or unfilled and you can see that also applies to the circle and also this one and kind of a diamond shape and oval and things like that and we can pick those up using the pickup tool so let's just pick that up and that will now change into a brush because the background is still red it will only pick that up it will ignore the red background so that means it's semi transparent we can see straight through it and that means that we've just stamped things onto the screen and this one is kind of a weird kaleidoscope effect where we can change that brush 
into a kaleidoscope and stamp that on the screen wherever we want it into a pattern and if we right click on any of these tools it will bring up the options so we can redefine those patterns and those options so in this point we've got a symmetry we can have point or tile symmetry cyclic or mirror symmetry and we can mirror that up to well however many times we want we've got it six times let's change that to ten and then whatever we pick up that will mirror using the symmetry tool 10 times on that screen we can also click the magnifier you can see that highlights a box and clicking on the screen will then bring that up into a higher magnification again for detailed work it's not really amazing in high res mode but in low res you can get down to every single pixel that you've got onto that screen so what else can we do we've got coordinates there so we can even pin things down by coordinate on the screen and we can line those up so that we do have a basic coordination system we can get some kind of thing out of that and so these are one well, of the palette is there and then above that is the color selection box that we've got at the moment and obviously clicking on that will highlight whatever we've got we can have a basic dropper tool that picks things up and we can clear the entire screen with the clear button and that only has one level of clear I think so if you clear it twice unfortunately you can't undo it so we've just lost everything that we've done so we've just cleared it and cleared it again so it's now a nice orange color and now it's all black again so what else can we do we have some basic effects stencil effects and I did know what they did back in the day. We can change the fonts and we can change the preferences of the program. We can switch the coordinates on and off, fast workbench on and off, multi-cycle on and off, and things to do with that application. So let's just mess around with the fonts. We can click on the A and that will put a nice flashing box on the screen. That means that we can use that reticule to enter anything that we like by typing that in on the keyboard so we can place that anywhere we like on the screen and that will print in black at the moment because that's the color that we've got so let's change that to brown and usually by right clicking on the a we can change parameters but in this case we can go up to the fonts top menu and we can change the font from all of the ones that we've installed We can change bold, italic and underline as well so very basic things are on offer with this paint program and definitely if you know how to use this then you can handle D-Paint 3 no problem and D-Paint 4, AGA, D-Paint 5 well there you start talking about more colours and higher resolutions but it's the same kind of thing and so we can type things in various fonts and various colours on that screen so there is a quit option where we can quit things and it's saying do you want to save and we can load in and save things as well let's just see what came on this disc and in the brushes we've got various animation brushes that we can load in as an image it looks like i'm loading it at the moment or if we go to brush and select load then hopefully those will load in as a brush and the ones selected on the disc and the ones that you get aren't very great and they aren't very memorable either because they're all very small and very easy but there is a juggling animation you can see three balls on the screen and when you put that together with the other animation brushes that will create a kind of a juggling effect and we can press the tab key to color cycle at any point and make that nice and 1980s flashy because this was a 1980s application it looks and it feels 1980s so we've got 1980s circle of lights here that you might have seen in, in well outside 1930s cinemas in the USA so we can have those color cycling around and we can have arc brush no idea what that is it's some kind of brush high res pictures there's nothing in there and interlaced pictures there's nothing in there and clicking on parent will take us back to our parent directory medium resolution there is zero pictures in there so hopefully somewhere along the line we'll find the low resolution directory where we'll find a couple of sample pictures which are included on this disc one of them is a reference palette one of them is a seascape and then there's a stencil set so the seascape 
I think if you press the tab key then the C moves up and down and around and if I press the F10 and F9 keys that will get rid of the side bar and also the top menu bar as well so we can see that full screen so I think that's supposed to animate probably not remembering to do that on this playthrough so that's Seascape we also have a stencil set so you can have this available to toddlers who want to create a stencil image and this is something that you can do definitely by pressing the J and putting this into the background so we can have this on the spur palettes and the spur box in the background and simply tab these things into the foreground you can see I'm picking those up the background color is black so it will ignore the black and it will pick that up as though it's got a see-through background image unfortunately well we can't pick up this head because well some of it has been chopped off by the sun what can we do we've now got that as a brush let's well we can stretch that or shrink by the same factors let's shrink that all the way down so it's a head in the sky just like Zardoz we'll put that in the sky and we've got Zoo there in the bottom corner and some kind of a rug and some kind of a sun some kind of something or other so you can create stencil images and what we've got here basic color effect and this is some of the colors that we can use and we can change the color values to any of the color registers we don't have to have these stock colors we can change them to anything that we like